Okay, uh, this is just a really quick screencast just to talk through some of uh, my workflow on the MacBook Pro. Um, uh, by the way, this isn't Doug Belshaw uh, speaking. Um, this, <laughs> this screencast is actually in response uh, to Doug's uh, sharing of his MacBook Pro workflow, uh, which is a fantastic idea. It's actually something we don't do um, often enough in academia is, is share just the, the dirty nuts and bolts of what we actually do. A couple of other good ones to look at are um, the macademic.org uh, blog, Academic Workflows on Mac, got some brilliant tips from that. Um, and of course there's been a few others that have followed uh, Doug as well. Um, I'm not going to talk very much about uh, my uh, sort of online setup. Um, I obviously use online setup quite a lot. Um, but I've only actually just recently moved to Firefox. That's why I've still got the getting started button here. Um, I know I need to spend some time actually working out how to use it properly. Um, the most important one to me though is this import to Mendeley um, uh, sort of re applet. I'll come on to that in just a minute because Mendeley is one of the other things um, that I use all the time for my bibliographic management. That's what I really want to focus on today is how I go about some certain aspects of, of actually researching and writing research um, on the MacBook Pro. First of all, don't forget the basics. I, I absolutely rely on um, you know some of the really really simple things that you can do um, with a Mac. For example, just extending my desktop space. Learn your gestures. Learn the four finger, the three finger, and the two finger gestures. Learn them inside out, and um, because they are well worth um, sort of memorising and getting used to. I tend to use quite a few desktops, um, but generally I usually just have my calendar maximised, TweetDeck maximised. Um, and the other sort of software that I use generally is Reminders, believe it or not. I've tried quite a few to-do list things and they haven't really worked. Um, anyway, that's another story. I tend to also use a second desktop if I'm doing marking um, or if I'm trying to concentrate on a particular task. In this case, I'm actually trying to write a recipe for a recipe book, funnily enough, about uh, workflows on computers. Um, anyway, that's by the by as well. What I'd really like to look at is um, that sort of part of the research process where you're maybe looking for references to incorporate them directly into writing. I use Scrivener. I absolutely love Scrivener. I think it's a great writing tool. It allows you to focus on the writing um, and it allows you to manage, uh, I suppose, the space in which you write. Um, in your head quite nicely. So for example, this is one of my Scrivener documents. Um, this is actually a, a scratch pad document where I'll maybe jot down ideas for essays um, or you know maybe notions for papers or ideas for blog posts or whatever it might be. I also do have um, a separate Scrivener document that I use for um, blog posts. I actually use Markdown language in Scrivener as well. Scrivener's got a fantastic um, compile feature that lets you compile um, in various different markdown languages. Uh, that's another story as well. Um, let's leave that for just now. Uh, I've also, yeah, I also use Scrivener for my reflection diaries, for my teaching diaries and so on and so forth and a whole bunch of other stuff. This is actually a full paper that I'm having a look at just now in Scrivener um, that I'm trying to write. Um, and the fact that, uh, you know, you can move bits of your text about the place to try different um, sort of images of the paper is absolutely fantastic. Um, and the, the, the split screen tool and being able to look at it um, or look at the way that you've set up different things uh, or sort of set your thinking out in different ways is absolutely fantastic. Again, Scrivener is one of those things I'm very conscious of the fact that I need to sit down and spend about another four or five hours just learning how to use it yet. I'm not using it nearly enough as, uh, as I possibly could. But anyway, if I'm in here, for example, in my scratch pad, and today um, this notion of liminality has been um, sort of crossing my mind. Uh, so between here and my sort of online environment, I tend to use Google Scholar and um, my own institution's sort of library repository. EBSCO host, I think, um, it is the uh, sort of system that's used by the Open University. Um, you know, these are the principal ways in which I'll try to find 
literature, um, particular references or specific references, as well as some um, sort of general ones. Um, so, for example, in Google Scholar here, I'm quite interested in this one. Uh, so I'm going to add this uh, or download this PDF and add it to my, my, my sort of bibliography. Um, okay. Yeah, or is this going to be one of those ones that I can't actually? Yeah, let's see if we can. <coughs> yeah, get past that. Um, so basically, this is where I'm going to introduce Mendeley. Um, Mendeley is one of the other sort of cornerstones, if you like, of my sort of research process. Um, and it's just a super application. I've tried many different bibliographic management tools and Mendeley just does almost exactly um, what I want it to do. In particular, what I want to draw your attention to is that in Mendeley, I think there's a couple of others that do do this, uh, setting up watched folders. So I have a library dump where I'm about to download and place um, that PDF that I've just found online and that means that Mendeley will automatically wa watch that folder, pick up the PDF and most importantly it will organize it for me so that once I've got it in there, sorted out the bibliographic details, made sure that everything's okay, it will then rename it and save it into another folder. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, but anyway, so back online I have a quick look at the abstract, think to myself, yep, that's okay, I'll just download that. Now, instead of saving the file, what I tend to do is open it in preview um, for two reasons. One, um, because I usually do want to actually have a read of it very quickly. Um, and second of all, it means that if I wanted to rename it, I can do that. But I've also got the move to feature here. Um, and because I regularly use um, a particular folders, um, I can just stick this straight into my library dump folder. That's the folder that's watched by Mendeley. And once I click on that and move it, I just need to flick back into Mendeley, have a look at recently added, and fingers crossed, there it is. Finding it, oh, oh dear, I think I might have got the title of that one wrong. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, the metadata for this particular. Ah, right, so it's just an editorial piece. Ah, no, is it the full PDF that I've downloaded? Right, okay, that's my fault. Normally, with well-structured PDFs, um, <clears throat> Mendeley will find the correct bibliographic information in there. This is perhaps not one of the best examples. One of the other things I do in Mendeley is for every paper that I'm writing or every piece or maybe for every collection, not only will I add it to um, sort of main categories. I will also keep a folder for a bibliography for a particular paper uh, and that just allows me to um, you know pick lots of references at the same time um, because of course in Scrivener one of the unfortunate things is that Scrivener doesn't support uh, many bibliographic tools so you have to kind of copy and paste citations manually between the two. Um, unfortunately, Mendeley doesn't um, have any kind of uh, RTF scan feature either. I believe that that's coming, um, which would be absolutely great because it means that we can maybe just stick in sort of like square bracket tags or some other kind of mechanism, sort of markdown mechanism, um, to, to get the two working better. But basically, that's my sort of process just now. And obviously, in Scrivener, I might have several different uh, sort of research um, sort of notes and folders. One thing that I haven't really developed for myself properly as yet is a really half decent way of actually marking up PDFs or actually taking notes on PDFs. Um, I've tried different things. I've tried Skim, tried using Mendeley itself and Preview as well. I've even tried using uh, sort of Scrivener, um, and I'm kind of experimenting with Evernote yet again. Um, I, think I read a really interesting article on Evernote, how it's the, the you've got to jump into the deep end of the pool, you can't just keep dipping your toes into Evernote, so I'm desperately conscious of the fact that I need to get to grips with that, because some of the integration that you can do between the three is actually quite strong. So there we go, that's a quick overview of uh, my research process um, on my MacBook Pro. See you later.